In this tutorial, we're going to look at real neat overlays um, for our images, which will allow us to perform an action, such as download an image or, you know, view more information about that image. So let's jump in and have a look. So this is what we're building, a nice clean repeating group of products. If we hover over these products, we can see who took the picture and we have a download icon, okay? When I download an image, it opens in a new browser with the direct URL back to Amazon storage. And from there we can just, yep, right click, save as. Right, let's build this. So I've got a new page set up as a container layout column with the width 1280 by 960. This is the, bit, the build camp standard. I'm going to grab a group to create a parent container so that would be group parent. And I'm going to set the style to a wireframe. First of all, let's set this to columns absolutely fine. And then let's set our padding of 40 all the way around. Okay, I'm going to uncheck fixed width. No min width in this guy. And min height for now, I'm going to set to 400 just so I have some space to work within. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to grab my repeating group. Draw it in there. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so I'm pulling in some products. All I'm going to do is just search for products. And how many rows? Well, I don't know. So I'm just pulling from the database. So I'm just going to uncheck the fixed number of rows and I'm going to set the min height to just 100% of this, of this element itself. How many columns? Don't know. I will let bubble decide. I'm going to set my min width to 240. Okay. I'm setting it to 240 because I already have 40 pixels of padding here, 40 pixels of padding on the right hand side. So 40 and 40 is 80 plus 240 is 320. And if you follow Bill Camp, you'll know about our 320 rules. So we always try to hit a 320 min width. All right, looking good. Let's go over to the layout. Uh, we can just set a column. There's only a single group within there, so it doesn't matter. Column or row is fine. I'm going to uncheck fixed width, make that stretch the full width of the page. Remove the min width because the min width is controlled uh, over here, min width of the column. Okay, min height, I'm going to set to 300 for now. I'll come back and fix that up in a second. Right, now we can grab, and we're not going to grab an image. This is actually a group, okay? The reason why it's a group is because we have, um, we, we, this overlay is a group itself. So we want to put the overlay as a nested group within the group. How do we get the image? Well, simply we drop a group element and we set the background as an image. If it was an image itself, an image element, well, it wouldn't work responsibly well with this group, okay? Groups, groups can be nested within groups. So that's the secret source. So I'm going to grab a group, drop it in there. I'm going to call this group image. Okay, group image. So it is a product and it is the current sales product. Container layout can be column, totally fine. Uncheck fix width. And I'm first I'm just going to fill the space here. I'm going to say no min width. And I'm going to uncheck fixed height, fit height content. So it spans a full height of the available space. And I'm going to say 240 for the min height because I want it to be a perfect square. So if the cell itself, back on the repeating group products, the cell min width is 240. Well, on the group image, I've set the min height to 240. Now that I'm finished on the wireframe, I'm just going to remove this uh, wireframe style back to a default group. And I can see a bit of space between the padding and the repeating group itself. So on the layout for group parent, I'm just going to remove the min height now. It was just a temporary setting because I wasn't sure how much space we needed. So I can remove that and it hugs it nicely. Okay, let's just see where we're at with this. Actually, I need to preview a new one. This is the final version. Uh, what is going on? Search for products. Current sales product. Ah, 
So I'm going to remove the style because for group image, I just need to set the image. So here it is here. And quite simply, I'm just pulling in the current cells products image. Okay. And it's going to crop the image to fit the element size. So it's going to make the image, it's going to basically zoom in so the image fills this particular shape. I'm also going to check these other two so I can center the image because when I get down to responsive, this group is going to change shape slightly. So I always want that centered. And then I'm just going to crop the image. Uh, sorry, I'm going to make the image as wide as the parent element itself. Okay, let's see where we're at. Let's remove this debugger bar. Nice. And you know, that looks great. If that's what you want, that looks brilliant. But I want to show you how to create nice margin. So what I'll do is on the group image itself, I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to add right margin to separate these images on the X axis. Then I'm going to add bottom margin to separate on the Y axis. Now, if we refresh, Brilliant, it looks really, really good. So I've got more images than I showed you in the preview just because I decided to change the min width size. Absolutely fine. Now for the overlay itself. Actually, before we get to the overlay, let's just have a look at responsive, make sure it's doing its thing. So you can see um, at 1050 that we've got four in a row. As we come down now three in a row two in a row and then one in a row now i have a problem here in that i have now 80 i have 40 pixels of padding on the parent group and i have 40 pixels of margin um, within inside of the cell so we need to fix that so what i'm going to say is on the parent group's products i'm actually going to add minus 40 pixels of right margin. So then we can center these images properly. So now you can see, we go down to one image, we now have this 40 pixels here and 40 pixels here. That looks much neater. All the way down to 320. And you can see this image cuts a really nice shape. Okay, let's have one last look. Looking good. Now let's do the overlay. So I'm gonna grab another group for that, draw it in. I'm going to set the data so that it's a product and it's a parent group's product. I'm gonna actually set this to a wireframe so I can see what I'm doing for a second. There it is there. I'm going to set this to align to parent because we're going to need to align some data at the bottom, the download button and the user info button. So align to parent. And then I just want this to fill all of the space here. So I'm going to make it do that. Fit height content is unchecked. Min height doesn't matter. Don't need any padding or margin. Okay. So now this group, this is called the group overlay. Fantastic. All right, so let's fill that space nicely. Now let's have a look at the style. So I'm going to set a gradient that starts at white. However, it will be zero, ends at black, and not 100, maybe 75 or so. Um, and this is still, there's too much black here. So I'm going to set an intermediate color of black as well. Maybe set that to 20. And you can see we've got a lot more white space now, a lot more white space because we've pulled the opacity down to 20 for the, for the center area, intermediate color. Let's refresh and have a look. Looking really good. Okay, so we only want to see this on a hover. We only want to see this on hover. So I'm going to uncheck this element is visible in page load. And I'm going to say only when the group beneath it is hovered, then show it because it's not going to be visible in page load. So we will be hovering uh, that group image first, okay? So if group image is hovered, then the group overlay, which I'm currently using, is visible. Let's try this action. Yeah, that's exactly what we're after. Perfect. 
Next step, we need the information at the bottom. So I'm going to grab a group. And remember, we have a line to parent set on the group overlay. So let me draw that in there. Uh, and this will be called group info. Now, yeah, that's fine. Let's carry on. So it's a product and it is a parent group's product. I'm going to remove the style, maybe change it to actually a wireframe so I can see it. All right, and now we can align it at the bottom. So the parent is set to align to parent, and now we have all these lovely options here. So layout is going to be a row. Okay, I'm going to distribute. I'm going to have user data on the left and a download button on the right. So it's a row. And then put it at the bottom, please. So uncheck fixed width, no min width, don't care about that. And then let's set up some padding. So let's put 20 pixels of padding all the way around. And we have some space left in the middle, but I want some more to work with. So I'm going to set the min height to 80. Okay, brilliant. Now, in my database, I have products, but I don't actually have any users associated with the products. But I do have a people's uh, data type here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another group in here to hold people and just pull in random people. This is really a UX course, folks. It's a UX course. So um, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to use call in people here and just so we can bring in some images and names. And let's just say do a search for people and just pull in random random stuff here. So let's say random item. Fantastic. Let me set this to wireframe. And we, we basically have a layout of a row in here. So I'm going to grab an icon, just draw it in. And here we have our icon. This is going to be a download icon. So here's a download icon. And it's going to be shown on a dark overlay. So let's make this white. Now, I want it all the way on the right-hand side. So back on the group info, I'm going to change my container layout to space between. And this separates the two. And now by clicking on my image, I can just align it vertically. Boom. There you go. Let's make it 24 by 24. Nice and neat. Okay, so that's the work on the icon. This group here, I wanted to fill this available space. It is going to be a row because it's going to have an image on the left and the username on the right. So it's going to be a row. Then I can just say fill the available space. There we go. No min width. Min height will stay like this just for a second. I'm going to set a right margin of 10 just to separate, you know, have a bit of space here. All right, let's get some users in here. So I've set my data source to a person. It's just a custom data source to set up. Now I'm going to bring in an image. I'm going to say that this, now that we're searching for people, I'm just going to say it's the people's image there. And I want to cut a circular shape. So I'm just going to say, zoom into that image, uh, set the roundness of 20. Okay. In terms of the size, why don't we make it, it will be fixed ratio because it's perfect circle, one by one. And let's just make it um, 24. No, that's too small. Let's make it 30. Looks nice. 30 looks good. And then put that in the center. And now that we have uh, that in there, let's also get the text in there. And this is just going to be the person's name. Let's make that a white color so we can see it. Actually, I'm going to use my 16 pixel style that I have set up to start with because it's got a line spacing of 1.5. I just need to change the color. And over on the layout, I'm going to say fill the available space. And I'm going to set a max height of 24 because 16 times 1.5 means my element has to be at minimum 24 pixels tall. And now it can only fill one, one row. Don't care about the min width. Don't care about the min height. And I'm going to center that vertically. Okay. I'm going to set some left margin here of just 10% pixels. Looking good. Now that we've done this work, I can remove the min height and group people because it's the content within that determines the height of this group needed. So I can remove that. I'm going to set the default background to a default group so it's transparent. And now let's go back to group info. I'm going to change also that to a default group so it's transparent. 
And in terms of the layout, we can now remove the min height because it's the content within that determines the min height. So remove that. There we go. Nice and neat with 20 pixels of padding all the way around. And let's see where we're at with this. Really good. Maybe the text needs to be slightly smaller. It's currently 16. Let's change that to 14 because it was cutting off a lot of information there. So 14. Another quick look. Yeah, this is perfect. Exactly what I'm after. This icon looks a bit big. Uh, now I'm just sort of riffing a bit here, to be honest. It doesn't need around this. Uh, let's just make this 20 by 20. 20 by 20. All right, so how do we download this image? How do we download it? So we've designed this little icon, but in terms of downloading, we actually need a, an, a link element in here, not, not this download icon. I put it here just so I could sort of design, whack it where I wanted to, um, but we actually need a link element. So I am going to remove this, but let's just remember how to set this up. So 20 width, 20 height in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in a link and drop it in there. And I'm just going to delete this guy here. And I am going to remove the style. And I'm going to choose 14 is fine. Let's choose white for this guy. I'm going to say that I'm going to show an icon instead. So that was that download icon. This is the same library, download icon. I want this uh, centered in the middle and actually 14 looks too small. I think this is why I did 16 earlier or maybe even 18. Okay, that looks fine. And in the layout tab, just put it in the center. All right, so we're back to where we should be. Just having a look at this to element 20 by 20. Perfect, no more fiddling here. So how do we download this? So basically we have data linking through. So the data here is a product. So let's link it all the way through. So now we can say that we wanted to go to an external URL, which is a direct Amazon S3 link. And the way we are saving images in the database is just forward slash forward slash S3 and then the rest of the link. So I'm just gonna add HTTPS colon, and then I'm just gonna say parent groups, products, image. And it's really as simple as that. Bubble saves the Amazon URL to the database and just links it off. And now I can say open in a new tab. And if we preview this, hover across, let's have a look here. And there's the image there and I can right click save as image. Okay, I can just see that hover is not working nicely. So I'm gonna remove the hover, perfect. Another look at responsive, Let's see how this behaves. There is our element there. Very nice, bring it down all the way down to 320 and perfect padding all the way around. 40, 40, 40, 40. This is looking really good. So that's how we do it, action overlay, uh, and that's how we download images. So the way we do download images in Bubble is to link off to a new tab. We can't actually just save it straight to the computer. I'm sure there are some plugins uh, that enable this, but actually viewing it in a tab for me is more convenient because I don't always want to download an image to view the full size. It's actually more convenient to look at a, a larger image in the browser before we download it. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you soon.